AP Bio, we're going to be talking a little bit about populations because once we have an environment, we know that, oh, something's going wrong here. Well, what allows those populations to grow or not grow, especially if we're starting to threaten environments? So that's what we're going to try and deal with. So what are the roles in the environment and other organisms in population size? This isn't dealing with extinctions or stuff like that. That's a separate time or how everything is actually regulated, but it's the what are the factors that are involved? And obviously there's a whole bunch, this one actually has a whole bunch of objectives that show up on the AP test, and there's some text references. So when we talk about environments and things that organisms need, it turns out we have three resources that are essential. Everything else is cons of, of no consequence. First thing you need is food. Second thing you need is shelter. Third thing you need is space. As long as you have food, shelter, and space, you're good. If you happen to have food, shelter, and space, population growth is potentially unlimited. And we call that exponential growth. When you have all the food, shelter, and space that you need, you can keep reproducing. You don't need to worry about the young dying on you. And the old will keep on getting older, right, and hip hip. And the problem is we, there's no such thing as unlimited food, shelter, and space. So once those limits start to come into existence, we call it exponential growth. It's the regulation. It's the, no, 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 you don't get to go on forever and ever. And what you get with this regulated growth, logistic growth, is there's a leveling off period. There's like a cap, which is right here. And we call that cap the carrying capacity. The only way you can find the carrying capacity is to go past it. Because once you go past the carrying capacity, we ran out of food, shelter, and space, and or space, and the population starts to die off. You dip below it. Oh, now we have food, shelter, and space again. It goes up, and what you get is this undulating or this oscillating effect out and around that, that maximum, that carrying capacity. In math speak, we would call it a limit or an asymptote, except that we don't just kind of get closer and closer. We actually kind of bob up and down around it. There are lots of things that turn out to play into logistic growth regulation, and we'll deal with that at another point in time. But in particular, both of these, exponential growth and logistic growth, have what we call a growth or a growth rate. Growth rate is based upon four things, and food, shelter, and space tie in to those. One of them will be how many individuals are being born, so birth rate. How many individuals are moving into that particular area? We call that immigration. So those will add in. If you have plenty of food, shelter, and space, those will go up. If you don't have food, shelter, and space, those numbers go down. What you also have are death rates, which will obviously decrease from the population. And then you have emigration, leaving the area. Not having food, shelter, and space will increase emigration, and it will increase death rates. So food, shelter, and space always turn out to influence the growth rate. Why is any of this important? Because a story I will tell you in class, we are all immigrants. We are all immigrants.